Hello, Pathway Explorers. Welcome to Landmark 12. Meet the friends in your neighborhood. My name is Drew and I love nature. So what we're going to do today is learn the names of some of my friends, the friends that live here in my backyard and uh, neighborhood. You know, I got interested in nature when I was about your age and I first fell in love with frogs and turtles. And those were the first names I learned. Painted turtle, snapping turtle, even one called the stink pot turtle, believe it or not. So knowing the names is important. They sort of become your friends. And we all know that knowing the names of uh, our friends is pretty important stuff. Let's go and explore and see what we can find. So actually, one of my favorite friends in the neighborhood and in my backyard is the black-capped chickadee. And there's no better way to see chickadees than to put up a feeder. You know, the sunflower seeds are definitely one of the favorite foods of the chickadee. But you know, I have other ways of identifying chickadees too. Their call is a, you may have guessed it, chickadee dee dee dee. However, their song is quite different. It's a whistled song, and it almost sounds like they're saying, Hi, cutie. So I actually have a special trick to get chickadees to come in close. Some people call it bird whispering, but I tend to call it pishing because it sounds like the word pish. And it kind of goes like this. Psh, 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 psh. Come with me and let's go see a chickadee box. Chickadees are cavity nesters, which means that they nest in a hole. And this entrance hole has a metal plate on it. it just makes it more difficult for animals such as squirrels to get into the box. There's lots of other friends that live here in my yard as well. The animal that I see the most often is the squirrel. We actually have two kinds of squirrels, gray squirrels. Now, even though the name is a gray squirrel, they are actually black here in Peterborough. They kind of come in different colors, but most of them are black. And we have the red squirrel. Red squirrels love eating the seeds from the spruce tree. So what I have here is a spruce cone. And what the squirrel does is it removes the little scales. Underneath each scale is a seed, and they love eating those seeds. And once all of the scales have been removed, that is what's left. So just the core of the cone is left. These are actually the scales from the cone. And we call this a midden. And it midden really means a garbage pile. And red squirrels love to make middens. Another way to identify squirrels is by their tracks. We have the two front paws here and the two back paws here. So another way that you uh, can tell if there are black squirrels or gray squirrels in your neighborhood is to look for their nests. And we have a special name for that nest. It's called a dray. And they're always high up in trees and they look like big balls of leaves. You know, it's also important to learn the names of some of the trees. Uh, I love trees. They give us shade in the summer. They're beautiful. They produce oxygen, oxygen that we need to live. And they're also uh, wonderful for attracting birds and mammals. There are really two different groups of trees. Deciduous trees that lose their leaves and coniferous trees that have cones. So what I'm looking at here is a coniferous tree called a spruce. And here's a, a kind of a cool way to remember how to identify a spruce tree. Like the word spruce, the needles of the spruce tree are spiky, S-P, spiky. They spiral around the twig. And if you take a, a spruce needle off, 
you can spin it easily between your fingers. And uh, like the uh, needles of all the conifer trees, they smell wonderful, especially when you just squeeze them a little bit. So another really common tree in your neighborhood and maybe even in your own backyard is the cedar tree. The cedar is also a, a conifer. It produces really small little cones though. The leaves of the cedar tree are quite different from the spruce. They are very flat. And if you look closely at them, you'll see that they're covered in little scales. What other animal has scales? Well, fish do, fish have scales. Where do fish live? They live in the sea, don't they? Sea dir. I think it's got to be my favorite uh, tree smell. Just smell wonderful. Okay, so we've learned a little bit about the spruce tree, the cedar tree, and now I want to show you a pine tree. Like the word pine, the needles are like pins. Pins, pine. They're long, they're soft, and they come in groups of either five, and that means it's a white pine, or they come in groups of two. And pines with two needles are red pines and scotch pines. This is called a red pine. And if you look at the bark on the tree, you can see there's almost a little bit of a red color. Now, believe it or not, you can even identify the deciduous trees in winter. That is the trees that lose their leaves. And I'm sure all of you have heard of a maple tree. Well, maple trees are actually quite easy to identify. On a maple tree, the buds are always opposite each other. There's one bud on one side of the twig and right across from it, there is the second bud. Well, I really hope you enjoyed learning about some of the friends that live in my backyard. I have a challenge for you. I need you to go out and see if you can find five birds, five different types of mammals, five different types of trees. It's lots of fun. And even in the winter, you can find all kinds of different plants and animals. Just keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and go out and have fun. Thanks for joining me for Landmark 12. See you next time.